Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you're watching this. Final game of the week, right? Taking on the San Antonio Brahmas, one and one, fresh off that get right game versus the Guardians versus the Houston Net, uh, Roughnecks, who are in 2 0 and 7 0 in their franchise history. Guys, pretty pumped about this game, mainly because of the quarterback play of San Antonio. Now, I kind of had Cone middle of the pack in week one for my rankings, then bumped him up to number three. He had three touchdowns, almost had a fourth, but can't say enough about Wade Phillips and his team in the Roughnecks. So Evan Wilsmore did a pretty awesome job, per the usual, breaking down this on xflnewshub.com. What do we got going on for the Roughnecks this week? Well, injuries look to be pretty much the same. Beckett's got the hamstring issue limited. Emmanuel Ellerby still a little limited with being a little sick, but this team is going to ride and die with that high-flying offense led by Brandon Silvers through the passing attack and Cole McDonald through his rushing game. Now, I'm normally not a fan of these two QB systems, but the Roughnecks seem to have it pretty well done. They got the plenty of weapons. Silvers had a clean game last week. That's what I was saying. You know, he's, he's one of the more underrated passers in all football. He's coming up on 3,000 career yards. I think he's at like 22 or 23 career touchdowns between the AAF, XFL 2020, and the Spring League, and with his four touchdowns this year, they're moving. They're they're moving these guys around, getting him position to play. You know, Nick Holly got involved. Max Borgi, Deontay Burnett, Cedric Bird, all these guys are players. Most recently, Davion Davis was taken off the roster. I'm not really sure what's going on there. And then you also got it. Uh, Garrett Evan, uh, Garrett Owens as their tight end on defense, led by Trent Harris, who I think has five sacks this year. Uh, Tavante Beckett, really awesome dude, but unfortunately injuries might slow him down. And then they got Will Likely, who's dynamic in the punt return game as well, despite two fumbles last week. So biggest question for the Roughnecks is are they going to beat themselves? Because I think the way that San Antonio was moving the ball, a little bit more confident, Cohn getting his third career start, that they're going to be more dynamic. Another guy you want to look at on that rough net defense is uh, Jack Heflin. This guy, once again, a true player, 54, played in the NFL with the Packers, kind of bouncing back and forth on their practice squad to active roster. He's a dynamic force up front. I think he had another half sack. I mean, I just see the Roughnecks right now kind of running away with this especially the utilization of their weapons, all their receivers they got going on. I mean, you got to, you can't sleep on a guy like Ben Putnam as well. The guy was a stud in the spring league. Nick Holly, a stud stud as well. A fringe, a fringe NFL guy, played in the CFL for a little bit as well. But both those guys are, 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 are playmakers. Now, to supplement the injuries behind Beckett, because Nate Wheeland, linebacker, was also put on the reserve slash release. They signed a gentleman from the NFL Pathway program. His name, I'm going to butcher this, was Aaron Donker. He's from Germany, played with the uh, Seahawks on their practice squad, uh, played in the German Football League of the Dusseldorf Panthers, You know, uh, played at Arkansas State for a little bit. And that was the move to correspond because Nate Wieland, who was with the Patriots last year, he – an NAIA guy, he's now on the reserve list. So not really sure what's going on. Biggest thing for Houston, we talked about it, was fumbles, fumbles, fumbles. That's pretty much where all the points they gave up came on short fields and whatnot to Drew Plitz, Arlington Renegades. If they limit that, they they win this game. And, you know, They won handsomely last week, but they win this game by at least another touchdown or two especially with some of these returns that likely was getting. I mean, to keep utilizing Cole McDonald, he threw some passes last week, uh, but mostly he's going to be used as a rusher, read option guy, opens it up for Borgie. You don't know if he's going to tuck and run, added another 39 yards. Last week, had a couple yards in week one for his first touchdown. And I really want to see Wade Phillips and Brian Stewart keep, keep putting the pressure on San Antonio. San Antonio's got some questions at offensive line. They're on their third offensive tackle with Kai Abashir. Kai's been on three different teams already in the XFL. He's getting his infinity stones 
for the XFL. He's on the Sea Dragons, cut by the Battle Hawks, and now with the, the Brahmas. That's going to be a major factor. Trent Harris is an absolute dog up front. Uh, I think they had another three sacks last week. They're coming up on eight or nine for the season. So that's a big that's a big deal there. And obviously it all translates, right? Because it could definitely be, you know, pressure up front leads to interceptions, less sacks, but you're getting the pressure, you get the interceptions, winning that turnover battle. Now, do you think the Brahmas could obviously take down the Roughnecks? It's not out of possibility, but it's taking them a little bit longer to get their footing. Obviously, in week one, we all saw what happened with A.J. McCarron putting the team on his back and leading them to a victory. But I do think that the Brahmas are not going to just roll over if they're managed to not turn the ball over. And a couple. And I know this is very, very limited football IQ stuff, but it's the reality. I expect Houston to win. You know, Evan, Evan's got his prediction down here that they're going to win as well. Put up another uh, road victory. It pretty much, it pretty much, you know, solidifies them a playoff spot once you get into that three wins because it's only a ten game season. You, you can play five hundred football for the rest of the year, slightly under five hundred football with seven games left. Go six and four in the South Division with how bad Orlando is. It seems like they're going to be out, and then let uh, San Antonio and the Renegades take care of themselves. Houston can ride their way into a playoff spot. I do think they win in this. My prediction would be 32-18 to 18 Roughnecks. But moving over to the Brahmas, uh, you know, Tristan McKinsley, McKinstry did his article in XFL News Hub for that. I mean, this is going to ride or die with Jack Cohn in that running game. I mean, you got two, two NFL caliber rushers in Kalen Barrage and Jacques Patrick. You know, a lot of st- uh, a lot of good but not great players. You know, they got rid of Drew uh, DeBlanco last week. I don't really know what's going on with that. But, you know, you got some decent safeties in Jack Corner and Ryan Lewis, the Texada, uh, Ren- Renanthony Texada and Tara Bonds playing that nickel. These aren't bad players at all. Uh, I really like what Ben Davis has been doing, kind of flying around the field. No elite pass rushers, in my opinion. On that, uh, I think one of their better players on this team is Parker Romo. He's been doing pretty good on the kicking game. Uh, decent amount of injuries coming in to Friday. You got Mike Scott didn't practice on, on Friday. Jordan Williams, Norman Price, Derek Kelly, co- uh, both offensive tackles who've had their issues. Kobe Smith is limited. Offensive lineman Chidi Odeke did did become a full participant, so that's big. And then Jalen Tolliver is also not practicing as well. It's one of their better receivers to combat uh, what's going on. I mean, this is all going to be going on with Jack Cohn. You know, how is he going to take that next step? How is he going to continue to progress and then give his defense a shot with, you know, not giving up short fields on the turnover game? You know, San Antonio, though they don't have the elite pass rusher, they have managed to total seven. Houston had 12. Excuse me. I'm looking at my notes now. Houston had 12 sacks this year in the first two weeks for them coming in from Trent Harris in week one. Uh, you know, Tristan is the Brahma's guy of XFL News Hub. He, he's also kind of a little skittish on them as well. He's got them at 28 to 28 to 18 i'm going uh losing i'm going with the roughnecks as well moving forward you know i do think the 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 brahmas are going to be in prime position to fight for that second playoff spot but the south division rolls through rolls through houston obviously like that you know uh, another guy you want to look out for is Dion yelder and elise mack Two guys, two of their tight ends, bigger guys, bigger body guys, kind of came into their own. Yelder's getting more comfortable. Mac almost had two touchdowns, I believe, uh, last week. Got stopped at the one yard line. So this, I think it's going to run through a lot of those play action plays with them, especially with how dominant their run game could be. You know, they went over 100 yards in week one, 66 in week two. Uh, it's 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 going to be a good game. 
You know, the score might not indicate how good the game is because I think the turnovers, but if Cohen's on, Cohen's on. And one of the guys I want to highlight as well is Reed Sinet. He's been really helping Cohen, kind of coaching and mentoring him through this whole process. You know, Sinet has played in about seven preseason games, I believe, has put up decent numbers with that. And the guy is acting as that second coach where a lot of these these guys, looking at Eva Guardians, there's a lot of turmo- turmoil in the quarterback room. So I'm really confident to see Cone's next step. This is all going to come down to Cone, if you haven't noticed on, on this little preview and whatnot. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from the progression, and Heinz Ward looks like he's becoming a little bit more comfortable in his coaching abilities. The amount of experience that Houston has from – the coaching staff to the players. These guys are NFL players and have played in the alt football leagues and whatnot. That to me is what sets this team apart. And the only one that can dwarf them right now, personally, is the Battle Hawks. Looking forward to that game as well. But yeah, I got I got Houston beating the uh, beating the Brahmas going into week uh, going into week three. So thanks, guys. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe. You know, helps me out, and uh, you know I'm probably gonna do a giveaway at a uh, 1K sub. So thank you guys. Bye.